Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. My name is Eric, thank you so much for tuning in. So, if you saw my message last night, you're probably wondering why Morning Coffee has been uploaded on time. Well, that's because my Wi-Fi came back on. Yay! <laughs> okay, so anyway, this is a general reading for the weekend. This is your weekend edition, all right? So this is for today, Friday, December 14th to Sunday, December 16th, yes? So this is just a general energy reading, whatever spirit wants to talk about for the weekend things for you to think about for the weekend, whatever. Um, this could be something that happened already. This could be something that's coming up. This may not be anything that you've gone through at all. All right, take what resonates and leave what doesn't. It is a general reading, but um, if you want to just hang out and listen, you'll probably get some good insight for something. Yeah, so without further ado, let's do it. <laughs> Okie dokie, here we go. Hi Spirit, please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good for all involved for the weekend of December 14th through December 16th. Thank you so much Spirit. Okay, I'm seeing a big old mass of colors. Green, purple, blue, a little bit of brown in there, some pink. Um, interesting, the brown is coming through as the focal point and um, it's speaking towards grounding, uh, connecting with the earth. Some of you are actively doing that. Um, and because of that, you have this like explosion of activity in your upper centers, your upper chakras. That's a good thing. Um, some of you need to be getting grounded, but the message here is the more you ground yourself in the present moment, the more you're able to access your higher centers and develop those things. And, um, yeah, yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. There is a lot of, um, third eye crown chakra activity going on, maybe even throat chakra. Clearing, cleansing, healing. Um, many of us are dreaming pretty vividly at the moment. I know I am. Ooh, ringing. Um, and yeah, and that constant ring. I've been hearing that for months, maybe over a year now. Um, but yeah, you might be experiencing ringing, ringing in the ears a lot at the moment. Okay, one more shuffle. Alrighty, let's get to it. Friday, December 14th through Sunday, December 16th. What you got for us, Spirit? Oh man, all right. <laughs> oh wow, okay, underneath the deck we have the King of Pentacles. And we also have the King of Swords. Okay. We also have Temperance. We've got that good old Page of Swords. Three of Pentacles. Nine of Swords. Two of Wands, and finally, ooh, the Nine of Wands, but the Nine of Wands is in reverse. All right. So it looks as if someone is giving up on some sort of struggle or releasing some sort of struggle here. However, there is still Nine of Swords energy around, and that is having to do with a decision that needs to be made or a decision that has been made. Now, um, this could be associated with work here. We do have the Three of Pentacles. Uh, teamwork, definitely, could symbolize that. Could also symbolize entrepreneurship. 
um, many of us or you know just a lot of people right now are going through a transition um, in work you know going into business for themselves or starting a new job excuse me in some way now also here I, I know I realize that I'm going backwards but that's okay well so we're we're in the middle row here right now this the three of pentacles nine of swords and the two of wands some of you do need to make a decision um, about work okay and with the king of swords here you're needing to be as objective as possible um, you may be taking some time to learn more about the situation to seek more information about the situation maybe even to get some guidance I'm just I'm hearing about the situation with the page of swords and temperance is a, is a card of needing to be patient okay because there's an alchemy that's happening here and so I really feel like for those of you that are in a transitional period that are trying to maybe find a new job or trying to find a better situation um, work-wise or are just trying to understand yourself or your situation better um, this card of temperance here feels like a really really good thing it's like the reassurance that everything is going to be fine you don't have to worry about this so much with the nine of swords even though you know you're not struggling against uh, going against the current anymore that's what I'm getting with the nine of wands in reverse and this actually was the first card that jumped out, the Nine of Wands in reverse. And to me, that's I'm getting an energy of not going against the current any longer. It's but that's still not without it's you know, the anxieties, the fears surrounding the situation. You know, with the Nine of Swords. But Temperance is here saying everything's going to work out just fine. There is an alchemy here that needs to happen. Temperance is talking about divine timing, but it's also talking about needing to be patient, okay? Yeah, we really could be talking about business, establishing yourself in some sort of business situation because underneath the deck is the King of Pentacles, okay? Now, I am getting an energy of someone being watched here with the Page of Swords. It's possible, oh goodness. All right, so this King of Swords energy is also, a, it's a masculine figure, a masculine energy between the King of Swords and the King of Pentacles. This, this is either the masculine energy within you that we're discussing here. And for those, for a lot of us, um, you know, we've been really working with our masculine energy working on healing our inner masculine and actually that's really driving us towards uh, new employment opportunities you know it's giving you it's giving you the clarity and the connection with yourself to really understand what it is you truly want to do business wise it's giving you the courage and the confidence to stand up to any sort of fuckery which is nice but now there's also a masculine energy out there that's watching someone. Almost like waiting for the right timing with temperance. And it's interesting, I'm getting an energy of they're kind of like watching you succeed in business and that's kind of giving, <laughs> it's creating some sort of anxiety. And they're needing to decide, they're trying to make a decision. And it's interesting because they're not fighting against the current any longer. They're not fighting the same old fight anymore. Um, it, it could be very possible that, you know, now that they've kind of, they've kind of come around, they've seen, they are seeing things differently. They're probably seeing things much clearer than they have in the past with the King of Swords here. And because of that, they're able to like give up this same old fight with the Nine of Wands. But now there's anxiety. I mean, there was, there was some anxiety before, but now the anxiety is different. What this feels like is they re, they, they're they coming to the realization that things are different, things have changed. Um, you know, they were blinded. They were blindly fighting this old fight, and now they've come around and see, they're seeing things differently. They've learned. They've learned quite a bit, potentially, with the Page of Swords. But 
but now they have some self-mastery to work on with the Three of Pentacles. They also could, uh, it's interesting, they could be considering some sort of teamwork, partnership. I just, that, that just hit me as I picked up the card. And this anxiety here, the Nine of Swords, is like a saying, am I going to be enough? Which is weird. But that's what I'm hearing when I look at this card in relation to this part of the message. It's like, will I ever be enough? I'm also, I also just heard, is he going to come to me? That's interesting. But it was a, a male voice that said that. But that could be your inner masculine speaking. And the energy that I'm getting from this King of Pentacles is either someone is established, is very established, or they want to be, they want to appear as this person, or they want to be this person, this established being. They're approaching the situation from a King of Pentacles point of view and the King of Swords. Now, Pentacles and Swords, you know, like I say, between the Queen and the King, I'm sorry, the Queen of Pentacles and the Queen of Swords, they're very similar energy. Well, so are the King of Pentacles and the King of Swords. It's just that the King of Swords is very detached emotionally, but he'll at least hear you out. Even though he may have made his decision already, he'll at least hear you out. The King of Pentacles It's interesting because the energy that I'm getting from the King of Pentacles is slightly different. He'll only tolerate so much before he'll just cut you off and say this is how it's going to be. Now, that could be I mean that could become pretty egotistical, sure. But it's not, I don't feel it's a negative, negative aspect of the situation here. <laughs> but again, patience is needed with temperance, divine timing. And I know nobody wants, we really don't want to hear that anymore, but it's the case. It's the truth, guys. Divine timing is not your timing. So it's really just best to maybe focus on career and let whatever is happening with this person, whatever they're going through, whatever they're trying to figure out, whatever, just let them do it on their own. Don't even pay attention. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> because you can't, you can't make it go faster anyway. But I am seeing some sort of energy of um, individuals being tempered for some sort of teamwork between temperance and the three of pentacles here. Right? Hmm. Okay. Let's, ooh, let's get some clarification. Clarification time. here. We're going to start with the top row. King of Swords, Temperance, Page of Swords. <laughs> temperance is on Temperance. Queen of Pentacles. Ooh. 
And the, wow. All right. Okay. Underneath the deck, we have the Six of Swords here. All right, so there's some sort of movement movement here. Now, someone is definitely watching a counterpart. Because we have the King of Pentacles is underneath the deck. So this is symbolizing a masculine energy. This could be an Earth sign, Taurus, Capricorn, or Virgo. It doesn't have to be, though. Like, I'm not really... I'm not going to place too much focus on that because at the same time, you could have a fire sign, Aries, uh, Aries, no, I'm sorry, not, uh, 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 uh Sagittarius, <laughs> excuse me, with temperance. But again, uh, this is a general reading, so that's really not, that's really not all that important. Okay, what is important is the message. We have a counterpart that's watching the other, all right? You have the king of pentacles is watching a queen of pentacles. Intently. Thank goodness. Lighting. Sorry, guys. Anyway. Queen of Pentacles on the Page of Swords. All right. So, and what's happening here with the King of Swords, so this King of Pentacles is, is, is taking on the energies of the King of Swords here. And with the Two of Swords in reverse, someone is seeing things, someone, someone is, is choosing to see something clearly. Is definitely seeing something clearer than they used to. Is definitely in the energies of having, of having to make the, a decision. Yes, but either in the process of making that decision or has already made it. Has already come to some sort of conclusion, and now is working out the kinks. It's like the universe is working with this person to move forward. All right. Um, it's interesting because this person, I'm. Uh, this person is aware that they can't cut. They can't step to this Queen of Pentacles without something of value. You know, you you can't just step to her with some mess because she's not going to take it. She does not take bullshit from anybody, which makes her very similar to the Queen of Swords. However, she's just much more emotionally invested than the Queen of Swords, because the Queen of Swords is just detached completely. Doesn't have time for it, doesn't have the time or the patience really for emotions. It's not her thing. The Queen of Pentacles understands that more. She's the mother of the Queens. I mean, to me, she's more of a motherly energy than the Queen of Cups, although they do share that quality. Here, the Queen of Pentacles is like the nurturer, the provider, the life giver the life sustainer phys in a physical sense. So she's very compassionate. She's very nurturing, very loving, but she's very stern when she needs to be. And she's not afraid to dole out some tough love. And obviously being the counterpart, this King of Pentacles is aware of that because he's kind of the same. This is, these are the counterparts here. So now if in relation to business though, Getting back to our first definition or our first scenario, um, this King of Swords energy is definitely, well, okay, the King of Swords and the King of Pentacles energy is being utilized right now. And someone is really making some tough decisions or is in the position or in the mindset to make some tough decisions. And so the King of Swords energy is being employed and someone is looking at something clearly. I'm hearing as clear as day. I mean, you can't really miss it anymore. You can't deny it anymore, but it's not even an energy of trying to deny it anymore. All right. And so obviously we have temperance on temperance, which is just, I find that to be absolutely hilarious. <laughs> absolutely hilarious. Temperance, clarifying temperance. I mean, come on. <laughs> so patience divine timing and even as i say that like i feel resistant to it it's like whatever it's not what i want to hear right now but okay i get it all right i mean there's nothing you can do about it anyway you just have to go with the flow and the universe is laughing and saying yeah that's true <laughs> okay but then um with the page of swords energy and the queen of pentacles 
someone is, now this would be you, the feminine here, sitting back and waiting and watching, watching for the right moment to strike, gaining your intel, understanding what it is you need to know so that you can move forward with the king of pentacles energy. This is like that motherly energy that's kind of like sitting back and just watching intently, waiting for the perfect moment, waiting for the right circumstances to move forward to the next level, okay? You may hear the garbage truck going by. All right, so now with the second row here, three of pentacles, nine of swords, and two of wands. Some of you, I'm hearing entrepreneurialship. Yes, the Three of Pentacles does talk about that. But there's also an, a, an energy of teamwork here. And some of you are really dealing with a situation in which you are in a team situation, but it's not, something's not right. Or at least something doesn't feel right, something doesn't see, seem right. And so now there's anxiety, there's fear, there's some sort of deceptive energy going on with the Nine of Swords, but I don't necessarily see it as external. I feel like it's internal. I feel like there's something that you need to understand within you or make it to come to a decision with within you in order to clear this up. Now, that's just a small message because the bigger message that I'm getting here is that someone is trying to go out on their own in business with the Three of Pentacles, start their own business, right? Or someone is trying to maybe find um, a better team situation. And the anxiety is coming in in the form of needing to make a decision and kind of being afraid of the circumstances I'm hearing or the options you may have or the what ifs, okay? But we do have an energy of someone just giving up the fight here with the nine of wands in reverse. It's almost like a martyr syndrome in a way. And someone is like done with that. Doesn't want to deal with that any longer. So let's clarify this second row. Oh, okay. But then also, because we do, this is, this is, I have to remember, we do have two messages that are coming through here. Um, two main scenarios. We also have this energy of this king of pentacles who's watching this counterpart. It's like, obviously, someone recognizes somebody else as their counterpart and wants to build a life, a relationship with, and is trying to figure out how to do this. It's think, and this is where the, the fears, the fears of inadequacy, inadequacy come through. It's like, I recognize this King of Pentacles here is saying, I recognize that I can build a life with this person. Because, why? Because they are standing on their own two feet. They're the Queen of Pentacles on their own. I have nothing to do with it, says the King of Pentacles. And so now it's like, wow, okay, I recognize, I recognize here with the King of Swords and the Two of Swords, the Two of Swords being in reverse, the King of Swords is upright. I recognize that this person is a counterpart to me. And I want to build a life with them. Three of Pentacles. But, and as I was as I was going to the Nine of Swords, I heard shame. Someone feels very shame, very ashamed of themselves. That could be maybe for their past, if this is someone that you don't really have much involvement with, or this could be someone from your past in which they did you dirty, and now this is why they're feeling like, oh shit, now what do I do? And then with the two of wands here, there is a decision that needs to be made. And I really feel like this decision is how to approach this counterpart, the Queen of Pentacles, that they are watching so intently with the Page of Swords. Okay, that was scenario two. So let's, <laughs> let's get some clarification here. Please, Spirit, thank you so much. Okay. So... Underneath the deck, ooh, see, I told you, the Hierophant. Someone wants to build a life or a relationship, okay? Um, we've got the Two of Pentacles, the Eight of Cups, and, wow, the Tower. 
All right. So there's some sort of humbling experience that's going on right here, right now. Whether this is you um, building a new life for yourself, starting a new business, starting a new job, walking into See, I told you, someone was trying to walk away from some sort of job, some sort of business opportunity, some sort of teamwork situation that just not, is not working for them any longer. And there's anxiety around it. And what I'm getting is, if it with this Nine of Swords here, if this and if this situation doesn't work for you any longer, there's no reason to be anxious about it. There's no reason to be anxious or fearful of what you're going to do coming up next. I mean, we have the Tower on the Three of Pentacles. So someone is about to, someone could probably be thinking about putting in their two weeks. Maybe someone already has put in their two weeks. This could be a scenario in which you may have already, you are either about to create a tower moment, take people completely off guard and try to move on from a job, or you may have already done that. And so now with the two of pentacles, this could be, um, so, Right, okay, so in the event that you already did do this, you already have made the decision and walked away here, not a two of wands, eight of cups. You may be feeling a bit anxious, feeling a little anxiety, fear about keeping, keeping finances in balance, keeping your life in balance with the two of pentacles. This is illusionary. The Nine of Swords is about all about illusion. It's not it's not real. It's just fear and anxiety, and that's just gonna do nothing but hold you down, hold you back, okay? But you definitely you, you definitely ruffled some feathers here in this job situation, in this teamwork situation. Or you're about to with the tower. No. For others of you, if you haven't already done this and you're looking to do so, your kind of your anxieties, your fears here are: How am I going to stay afloat? How am I going to keep? How am I going to keep everything in balance here? But you don't need to worry about that because if this is something that you really truly want to do, the universe will work with you to make it happen. Moving forward, okay. All you have to do is make the decision and clear the space and allow the universe to come through for you, right? And it's definitely, this could be, <laughs> with the Hierophant here, this could be like a good old boys type situation, potentially, status quo, um, your typical day job. working in the 3D world, conventional work, that, that kind of thing, okay? Now, getting to back to scenario two, with this counterpart, or this counterpart situation with the king and the queen of pentacles. Again, like I said, somebody wants to, wants to build a marriage or build a relationship with somebody. They want to do it in a traditional way, though, in some ways. But they, what I'm getting is they only want to do it in somewhat of a traditional way because they want it to be solid. They want to do it right this time is what I'm hearing. Now, doing something right is objective. Uh, I'm sorry, is subjective, okay? Because they're really, in, in the grand scheme of things, there is no right or wrong. It's just someone is approaching this from somewhat of a traditional energy just because they don't want to move too quickly and have everything fall apart. Like someone really sees the value in somebody else and really wants to make it work. This time I'm hearing. And th this is new to this person. This this idea of uh, of being a team player, of, of teamwork, of working with someone to build a relationship an understanding between each other. This is fairly new to them, the tower on the three of pentacles. Or this could be new to you. Like this could be completely out of left field for you, the person, the counterpart that's being watched.
Now, fear and anxiety comes into play when it's like, okay, well, how are we, how am I going to keep us afloat? But that's where the teamwork aspect comes into play. Also, ooh, wow. Okay, also what I'm getting here is there is a fear that this counterpart that's being watched would potentially be juggling some other partners. In turn, being a pl the player that this King of Pentacles used to be. Ooh, the plot thickens. But they're afraid of that. They are afraid of that. And there would need to be some sort of choice that needs to be made. With the Two of Wands here, someone would need to be walked away from. And somebody recognizes this. This is either you. If you're resonating with this part of the message, it's either you. Or it could be the person that's watching you. Because I feel like if, if at this point, you, the viewer, are very much on your own, living your life, living your best life, not really trying to get all that serious with anyone right now, but just because it just hasn't shown up yet. Okay, you might be you might be seeing multiple people. You might be going out on, you know, cute little dates here or there, you know, getting to know a bunch of people. And just letting the chips fall where they fall. You know what I mean? Allowing the universe to align you with the right person when the time is right. I mean, we have double temperance here. So even though we don't want to hear the message of divine timing and patience, at the same time, it's like, all right, whatever. I'm just having fun right now. I mean, nothing is really that serious. If, it, if that happens, okay, I'm ready for it, but it's not there yet. So whatever, I'm just going to have a good time and enjoy myself and spend time with people, get to know people, meet new people. But someone who's watching you is aware of this. They see you juggling. They see you having a good time. And they're worried about whether or not you would choose them and walk away from the rest and build this life with them. Get into this commitment, this marriage with them. The Hierophant. Because they've been a player in the past. And so now they're kind of like, shit, shit. What goes around comes around, huh? Yeah, <laughs> actually. Now, that's not, not all of them are players. I mean, that's kind of a specific message, but that's, for someone out there, that's the message for you. All right. Okay, so finally, we have the Nine of Wands in reverse. There's some sort of giving up on a fight, a long-term battle, too. Now, scenario one, you've been in this business situation for some time. Archangel Michael, you see? You're cutting something out. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but Archangel, Archangel Michael just flared up here. And I believe that was an ambulance. So you've been, I'm hearing, I want to say you've been fighting the good fight with the Nine of Wands for some time now, and you finally decided to let this go. You're not fighting it. You're not fighting against the current. You're not going against the grain any longer, at least in this sense. Because I feel like some of you naturally go against the grain, and that is there is nothing wrong with that. I am definitely one of those people. Yes. Cheers to that. Boop. <laughs> Scenario two: King of Pentacles is giving up this massive ego battle. I'm hearing is in the process of doing so. It's not an easy thing, and that's where the tower really comes into play too. Okay. Well, for both scenarios. So let's clarify this Nine of Wands piece here. Woo. Again, we've got the Two of Wands. We've got the Five of Swords. And we've got the Ten of Cups. Underneath the deck is, wow, the Six of Cups. All right, scenario one. You are getting back in touch with your inner child. You're getting back in touch with what you, what you really love, what you really want to do. Um, you're connect. You're reconnecting with something from your past. 
your childlike innocence for many of you. It's like you remember this piece of yourself that you've long since, for that you for a long time have forgotten or was just kind of like on the back burner and you, you know, you just left it back there simmering and now all of a sudden things are going crazy around you, okay? You're needing to make a decision. You're giving up this fight because with the Two of Wands and the Five of Swords, it's like this is just a never-ending battle. This is just going to do nothing but continue to, to, to hurt, to harm, to maim all of us. And I just don't want to fight this any longer. Okay? So that's why you're giving up the fight here, and you've got the Ten of Cups in mind. And I'm, it's, it, this is interesting. Wow. Okay, guys, I just found the intersection between these two scenarios. The Ten of Cups is on your mind. This, oh my God, that is that is beautiful. This is where the King of Pentacles and the Queen of Pentacles meet up, line up, because you've got the Ten of Cups on your mind. And so now this feminine energy, the Queen of Pentacles, is recognizing in her nurturing state, which she's also being nurturing and loving to herself here, she's recognizing that this energy, this Five of Swords energy, ain't shit. And it's time to cut that loose and go. But you see, it's not just the Two of Swords. It's the Two of Wands. So there's passion. There's spiritual guidance here. There's higher self-guidance. And what is that? The focus on the Ten of Cups, the happiness, the ultimate fulfillment. For some of you, this is a family, a marriage. For others of you, this is just emotionally fulfilling work. And because you are choosing to love yourself, especially with this Queen of Pentacles energy, you're choosing to nurture and care for yourself and let go of this Five of Swords energy. Now, you are actually aligning more with this King of Pentacles and you don't even know it. <laughs> you see? And that's how the universe works. They just said to me, that's how we work, guys. Temperance, twice. Patience, because you never know what's coming. Slow and steady wins the race, guys. Focus on you. Do what it is you love to do. Set yourself up for achievement, for victory. Set yourself up to get it, get what it is that you want. Disconnect yourself. Remove yourself from all this toxic energy with the Five of Swords here. And then that King of Pentacles is also, also has the Ten of Cups in mind. His or her ultimate fulfillment, um, marriage, family, kids, the career, whatever, whatever would be emotionally fulfilling, whatever represents the Ten of Cups to you. And you two are aligning in this way and you don't even know it. And now in the face of this combative, maybe twisted, twisted masculine energy with the Five of Swords that does symbolize that to me a lot. There's a choice that's being made. And they're giving up that fight, that old fight with the Nine of Wands in reverse. And this is a, definitely a soulmate, a counterpart, and it absolutely could be someone from your past. Six of Cups. Okay. Now, for some of you, this is someone that you don't even know yet. And it's interesting because neither of you may have met each other yet. But you have this soulmate connection. that you're So in this way, you're connected anyway. But you're aligning through the same energies. And, and that is helping you gravitate towards each other. That's pretty freaking awesome. <laughs> Alrighty. So now I'm going to get into the Oracle Guidance section here. Animal Spirit Guides. Okay, there we go, more, more Archangel Michael. Thank you, Archangel Michael. Some things are being cut out, guys. The alignment is happening. It's, I just heard it's starting on the surface and it's working its way down to the core of your being. 
I'll take that. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, for the weekend, animal spirits, best message, please. Lion. Ooh, and swan. Oh my goodness. Okay. Wow. All right. But then there's still some rabbit energy. The sky is falling. This is almost like the chicken little card here. The sky is falling. This talks about... I'm not... I, I know this card pretty well, so I'm not going to read from the book, but I am going to read swan and lion and... Oh my god. But rabbit. Rabbit is an individual that is... is like, this is the worst case scenario. You could think of this as the nine of swords representative of the Nine of Swords energy. It's described as, you know, rabbit, rabbit runs around saying, um, so-and-so, the, the, the wolf or the vulture or the hawk is gonna eat me, it's gonna eat me, it's gonna eat me. And then they're, that, it, that's like, oh wow, actually, you know what, that's a great idea. Thank you for that. And snaps them up and the next thing you know, you've gotten eaten. Worst case scenarios. Stop fear, you know what, actually, I am gonna get into the book really briefly for this because there's something in there, there is, a, there is actually, here we go, something that needs to be said. Rabbit energy is alive when we are scared, most often about the future, and we become our own worst enemy. We spin up a dust cloud of fear and then complain to others that we are lost. Notice your thoughts and words, oh rabbit, they shape your destiny, okay? So to bring, to, to help quell this rabbit energy, just take a day of silence. Okay, but, but, oh my goodness, we have lion and we have swan. And you could say, you could say that the swan card is like the twin flame card in this animal spirit deck. Swans actually ha have, are a symbol, a twin flame symbol, or have at least become a twin flame symbol. And I mean, look at the card, mirror images, mirror images. And so, this, there is definitely an energy of you are aligning. Some, many of you, many of us, the message is here. The message here is that there is an alignment happening between you and a soulmate, a counterpart, and you may really may not even realize it. But that's because, and that's happening because you are following your path. You are doing what it is you need to do for your own ascension, for your own stability, for your own livelihood. You are going through your growth in your ascension process, and you are, in fact, aligning with someone or some. And this either could be a counterpart, or this could be like a job situation or whatever. Okay, whatever it is you desire, you're aligning with, and you may not even know who or what this who this person is or what this cer scenario circumstance is that you're aligning with, but it's happening. Okay, let's start with lion. Where are you, Lion? Just a second. I actually have never read this card. So, naturally, <laughs> I can't find it. <laughs> um, this, these aren't really in alphabetical order or anything. It's just in order by element. There we go, Lion. I think I've maybe read this like once or twice, but anyway. Lion, patient, regal, regal, excuse me, a complete master. The lion is a master of the fire element and the living mascot of self-transformation. A lion personality de dedicates their life to personal and spiritual growth. This dedication inspires some and intimidates others. Therefore, the lion is respected by all, but known intimately by few. Some mistake the lion as hard to access or aloof, yet those with a keener eye know better. Lions are observant, stealthy, and precise in their words and actions. They do not waste energy or resources. This card reminds us that self-mastery is available to all, no matter where our quest begins. This is literally exactly what I was just talking about. You are working on yourself. Self-mastery. And here you go. You have the card, in my opinion, of self-mastery with the Three of Pentacles. Oh, and with <laughs> the Tower. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, when in balance... Lion is the epitome of peace and strength. When, it, he's, when out of balance, Lion is withdrawn and too serious. To bring into balance, one must do some daily meditation or, um, you know, work on friendships. 
Mm -hmm. All right. So now we have Swan. Here we go. Swan. Effortless creativity, sensitive mystic, elegant power. The swan represents heightened creativity. In Hindu mythology, the goddess Swarovski, Saras, Sarasvati, excuse me, <laughs> no, not Swarovski crystals, <laughs> Sarasvati, the embodiment of language, creativity, and artistry, rides on the back of this graceful creature. The swan is ready to take us there, to the fluid realm of writing, creating, and reflecting. This potent and healing energy is not to be taken for granted or taken lightly. When the swan card appears, your soul is calling for attention, for solo time. An inner voice is waiting to be heard, an inner vision is likely to be revealed. When in balance, swan has infinite creative power. When out of balance, swan is agitated, snippy, and lacks vision. To bring into balance, one needs some solo time or to do some writing. That's beautiful, guys. Okay, so now I'm going to close the reading with some oracle guidance from the Crystal Mandala Oracle here. Spirit, closing message, please, for the weekend, December 14th through the 16th. Thank you so much, Spirit. Closing message. There we go. One more is needed. Okay, one more card, please. One more, please. There we go. All right. Here we go. So I'm going to read this card first because it did come out face up. Card number six, Angel Amitio and Blue Obsidian, Revelation. Okay, card number six. Revelation. We bring you the gift of revelation. There are times... Sorry, let me get this. Do the, do the thing. It's not doing the thing. Oh, well. <laughs> ah, there we go. There are times when not working or not knowing is helpful. During such times, you develop unconditional trust in the universe. That trust will then support you in living your life according to your personal truths. You need a lot of trust in yourself and in life to live with such courage. Not knowing the bigger picture can help you stay focused on what you need to do right now, rather than getting so excited about the future you become distracted from the work that needs to be accomplished in the present moment, unwittingly slowing down your progress and delaying the very future you want to draw closer to you. However, there are other times when it is more helpful to know, to understand, and to see. A particular truth will help you gain perspective, let go of the past, heal a wound and feel safer, feel more loved, more empowered, and ready for the next step on your life journey. This is one of those times. We bring you the helpful gift of revelation now because you are ready to know a deeper truth. Well, that's lovely. Okay, and finally, we have... Ah, Goddess Lakshmi and Dendritic Agate. Her Golden Grace. I love this card. And that is an 11, guys. Three and eight make 11. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> okay. There we go. Her Golden Grace. Give me the give me the brightness, the brightness thing. Do the do the thingy. The, the, okay. <laughs> we bring you the empowerment of her golden grace. Divine Mother Lakshmi, who brings blessings of enlightenment and prosperity, beauty and good fortune, smiles upon you now. Open your mind to the reality of divine generosity without limit. Open your heart to feel worthy of her love. When you allow her to grant you bounty, to bless you with her golden grace, she is empowered to shine her divine beauty in the world, to heal uplift, inspire, and enchant the souls in need. 
I'm going to read a little bit more of this. The generous golden grace of the divine feminine has its own way of accomplishing its purpose to uplift, heal, and inspire the hearts of humanity. Where there is fear which prevents a soul from being open and allowing life to happen, the Divine Mother may respond by wrenching whatever is obstructing the flow of love out of the way. If her fierce intervention is needed to ensure freedom from the, for the soul, then this is what it, she expresses. Sometimes the harder path is what will truly free a soul from needing to repeat a pattern. Sometimes, however, when that harder path does not accomplish I'm sorry, what that harder path does not accomplish for the soul is not particularly helpful. Okay, I'm going to try that again. Sometimes, however, the harder path does not accomplish for the soul what is particularly helpful. If a soul would become more enslaved in fear at the prospect of her fierceness or could benefit as much or more from a softer intervention, then the universal mother will employ a gentler method. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. So there it is, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope everyone has a great weekend. And I will see you guys on Sunday for our Twin Flame live reading. Yes, weekly conversation, weekly reading. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so happy Friday. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. And I look forward to connecting with you guys very, very soon. Yeah, take care. Mwah! Bye.